Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, so I can just um, kind of flow with you guys. Um, I've checked up the internet uh, on uh, Nollywood films and um, I'm not gonna go on this uh, line what you can uh, maybe um, get uh, uh, in internet, but uh, to uh, just get into it from my own personal experience being a Nigerian and uh, experiencing uh, Nollywood film and um, being nurtured by Nollywood films. So why is Nollywood film so interesting and um, become this multinational giant uh, uh, industry with all these millions that is possible from uh, Nollywood films. Nollywood, Nollywood films are basically just uh, home videos made by uh, normal people, um, actors and actresses, uh, mostly also just uh, people out uh, taken from the streets. And um, why is it possible that uh, with the help of Nollywood film, basically um, all Africa could be integrated we have uh, a kind of common experience that arises when um, African people watch the Nollywood film. So basically we have to try to um, r raise our mind to uh, the perspective of the uh, Western-eyed people uh, watching Nollywood film and what uh, black people, African people see when they watch Nollywood films. So in the Western eye perspective, Nollywood films might be something that is not well organized, that is really too flashy uh, for the uh, Hollywood uh, perspective. But um, why is it uh, that there is a, a technical uh, term of how film should be made and how can, could Nollywood film manage to uh, go above or beyond uh, um, taking part in this uh, technical uh, mentioning how films should be done. So when we uh, have to, if, even if we don't want to, we have to take part in this uh, colonial aspect of um, uh, uh, the time of slave trade. So. Between that time, there was the time of negritude. And in the time of negritude, uh, black people were not really performing before that time in uh, writing. And that's how it became that it is the Western perspective that is uh, saying this is how uh, the mentioning has to be like. But with the help of the Nollywood film, Africans could really express themselves and put their own history together. So Nollywood film is kind of also the possibility of rethinking the colonization that has happened through the years and bringing back the cultures that has been lost. If I watch Nollywood film, for instance, I learn a lot about my language, I learn a lot about my culture and I learn a lot about uh, locations in Africa, even if I've not been in Africa for a long time. So basically, Nollywood film is the first intervention, we can say, that has managed to connect the whole Africa, and that's why Nollywood film is not really something we have to see. We have to really see this uh, resource as one of the most greatest research that Africa has produced uh, uh, in, uh, after the post-war and post-colonial time. And it's a kind of new colonial structure, new, uh, and uh, in the research work of um, Dr. Nkechim uh, Bakwe, uh, she is talking of the oral Nollywood. Okay. If um, I go back to the structure trying to divide, maybe you can try to put into your head a kind of triangle. And 
up the triangle as the western eyed perspective and the Nollywood perspective might be here and um, I'm gonna try to put some links from the Bollywood perspective because the Bollywood from India and the firms come in there and the, and the Nollywood firm coming from Africa, they might have a link because these two areas where those firms are rising up so much are those areas that are mainly not in the mainstream of the filmmaking area. They are not this Hollywood uh, filmmaking area, but they could manage to place their market. And uh, to my opinion, uh, um, Bollywood has reached the next level um, compared to the uh, 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 Nollywood films, but we could argue about that later. I think the Bollywood film has, um, has managed to, to um, go beyond the uh, Indian market, and um, this is something that is uh, necessary uh, for the uh, Nollywood film to, to happen. And um, it's happened in the Bollywood film with the help of their uh, cultural and artistic activities being um, interesting uh, for the Western-eyed people. So basically now I think we have to kind of uh, reconnect something to be able to uh, get the Nollywood film also interesting to the Western-eyed people. But uh, let us uh, think of the empowering part of Nollywood film first of all and why is Nollywood film so interesting uh, for African people, uh, we might raise up the uh, question later on if um, Nollywood film uh, needs uh, a Hollywood or a Hollywood needs a Nollywood film. But basically, the common experience between people of Africa um, has um, a kind of link if you compare also the common experience of the um, Indian people. So you can see there's a way of, uh, of uh, reading images, there's a way of, of, of gesture that uh, Nollywood film uh, has uh, in common. And um, it's always this uh, image kind of, a way of producing image that, that really um, is very interesting to the uh, African audience. And um, there is, in, if you produce a picture in a Nollywood film, and I, for instance, will watch the picture as an African woman, I can see some subcategories that is also mentioned in the picture without uh, the Nollywood film having to explain it to me. Um, I've been thinking of maybe showing some of uh, the screens I mean, but I think we can just get it ourselves. In a Nollywood film, for instance, if I try to get into a scene of a Nollywood film, and there's a scene uh, explaining or showing uh, the gathering and uh, how um, a nice African meal is um, enjoyed. Uh, in the African perspective, this is, um, beautiful and joyful, and I am getting also a lot of subcategories that um, is being explained to me without um, me getting really the explanation because I have the, uh, uh, the common uh, experience, the, the common knowledge that is being showed to me there is uh, bringing back my historical background that might have been forgotten at that point, but um, I, I, I start reading it out. And uh, in a Western-eyed perspective, it might be that um, they would just see the location as not appropriate or the table is not um, well uh, dressed uh, the way it is uh, known in the Western world. But um, for a, a black a diasporan, for instance, if you see uh, the way uh, the, the African meal is prepared, you, it goes down back to all the roots uh, and all the generation because you are coming from a perspective of knowing all the aspects and the steps of how food is produced 
is not compared to going to the supermarket and buying this stuff idea here. To prepare all this uh, stuff, it might be grinded, and you need a lot of ingredients that goes to a nice soup to make an African food. So from a black person perspective, especially from a, a diaspora perspective, where I know I have to go to a lot of uh, African shops to pick all these ingredients, I am getting a lot of history in that moment that cannot really and will not even be explained to the Western-eyed perspective. So the Nollywood film is going beyond just being a film. It's a society construction that is being um, kind of, you know, lectured in, in step by step. Um, all this division that happened 128 years ago, which was here in Berlin, on that act of Swantisha uh, uh, Berliner Conference, we had it here in Potsdam. This has um, brought a lot of um, hurts into the uh, African society. And with the help of Nollywood film, actually, basically, you can see the first time that the African um, economy and the African society are able to bring out their own ideas on a larger platform and, um, and create, basically, a multi-million uh, uh, industry, and it's not going to be easy for anybody coming from a Western uh, perspective to uh, just join into that uh, area and be able to um, try to figure out how it's made. It is basically really rooted in the African perspective and the individuality. The gesture that is mostly maybe not understandable from uh, by the uh, uh, Western perspectives um, are all brought out there. And um, I have an example on um, films that has been interesting to the Western eye, like um, uh, Rain Man. Uh, it's been a film that has really moved the uh, people's uh, mind. Uh, but films like that when really not in, in, in the African uh, uh, perspective. Um, why these missing uh, images that you could um, have uh, uh, empathy, sympathy with is not there for them in the sense of the images that are not showing in the fleshy way, the voices that are not raised in the appropriate way, which is maybe more theater play kind of structure uh, into in the perspective of 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 the western eyed so in uh, the african perspective this is something uh, we really like very much and um, if i think of films that have been very interesting in nigerian and other african countries that is coming from europe for instance you can remember maybe tat or, or derek Tatot and Derek were also kind of films that are like face-to-face, -face, talking theater play with a lot of gesture and fleshy, and African people uh, respond to that. And basically, that's the uh, same structure of, of Nollywood films. And Nollywood films are also basically uh, put out in, in the construction of fairy tale, uh, the story it has got um, uh, the, it's kind of a person in a situation. If it's uh, divided like it's a city construction, then they will show more church uh, uh, appearances, and people are dressed more like in suits and in dresses. And uh, if uh, the location is not Lagos and more like uh, the outskirts area, the villages, then uh, images are shown uh, where a chief or a king is uh, the leader of the community, 
and the wise men and the spirituality area, the religiosity area of of, of village uh, area uh, located in a Nollywood film are then often maybe the Voodoo religion showing, which is also um, a, a big part of our mm, history, heritage that has got lost because in all the dimensions, only the African uh, has lost their spirituality due to the colonialism. And the Nollywood film also goes beyond just showing all this aspect of culturality that has, gone, has got lost during the time. So basically, it also uh, teaches uh, uh, the African people um, who they are within their own structure. I learned a lot about Igbo people watching uh, Nollywood films and uh, also about all the other uh, uh, cultures that is in Africa or in Nigeria especially. I learned a lot about uh, Ghana uh, 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 tradition just watching a Nollywood film. I think um, Nollywood film is one of the greatest opportunity that uh, is in the hand of African and for African. And um, we should see it as a great blessing. And I will want us to try to focus on the possibility of um, getting those images to a level that will uh, reach the um, um, Western-eyed uh, audience in a way that they would be able to have empathy with uh, a Nollywood film because Nollywood films goes beyond just um, having fun and film. It is um, actually um, to end with the word of Dr. Uh, Kechi Mbakwe that wrote at uh, PhD on this oral Nollywood as the history of all our uh, uh, grandfathers and, uh, and and grandmothers that has been told to us in uh, the format of our law, and uh, our law is um, kind of the German would say Märchen, and this is how actually the old African continent survived by being able to pass the oral history to the next generation. And uh, Nollywood film is basically the next step where uh, black people figure out that the mainstream is not showing what they need. The mainstream Hollywood is not showing the experience of black people. The mainstream Nollywood is not showing the knowledge that black people have to share and have in common. The mainstream Hollywood is not showing the music that uh, black people have uh, in their midst and want to share with people. And also uh, the poetry of blackness is not there. And this is all what Nollywood film is containing the consciousness and the spirituality, and we have to kind of find a way to also bring this vision to the audience of um, the Western-eyed people. So basically, I don't really know my audience, and I don't know how far and how deep you are with the Nollywood uh, involvement. What have you seen in Nollywood films so far? Or do you know any kind of Nollywood film? What has been your experience? I would like to end here and uh, give it out to you. Thank you, Ms. Kupas Adebisi. So the floor is now open to questions and comments. Okay, I'll begin. Um, as a member of the diaspora in Germany, how have you felt that 
uh, members of the German public have received Nollywood films, and are you playing an active role in disseminating these films in Germany? And have you seen any effect in terms of because we talk a lot about stereotypes that dominate in Western media. So have you seen the effect of African films in diminishing these stereotypes and permeating people's minds in changing their vision of Africa in the West? I think um, I will start with the stereotypes. That's what um, I try to, to, to pull out and all what I've been saying, these uh, cliches that is already uh, uh, there is coming from the uh, uh, colonial structure and uh, is also coming from the defining point. I told you to try to think of the triangle and uh, if uh, the triangle, the up, is the point of definition and um, there's a time in history for negritude where black people were not allowed to write or read. So this has been like the next step, the Pan-African people, you know, activists to show, okay, we are philosophers, we are strong uh, mind people, we are readers. And um, the cliche of the Nollywood uh, films or oh, the cliches that is always uh, um, there when it comes to uh, African experience, African knowledge, is coming from the old history that we have to all go through and say, we need the rethinking at this moment, we need the rethinking at this level. And um, we have to, really understand that from what happened in the history is defining, saying that African people are like this or like that, and that is the border of Africa, what I said with the Africa Berliner Conference, where the division started already. So this is the point now that African people are defining themselves, naming themselves, fighting against the cliches and saying, no, this is not what we want, this is not what we are, this is not what we stand for. That is why this Nollywood film is also nourishing the African people themselves in the first place to get to the point of healing, get to the point of remembering and get to the point of being activist and saying, oh, that's wrong, I have to get to my own images and stay with it and that I will always have a different image and it's okay to have a different image and um, it's just the point of where is the different image something uh, that is not nice, or when would it be compared uh, as uh, uh, on the privilege at a point? And that's what we have to uh, get over with. And to get there, we need to uh, get to the empathy of the people. But the problem we have here with Nollywood film is that Nollywood film is making its money anyway already, because I always talk of um, the um, problem we also have, I don't have a board here, it's, um, but uh, maybe if you can just think of a coordination of uh, if this would be the um, one axis that goes up and the other x axis like this, and you will always think of uh, there's the monetary issue, even if you think of the pyramid, there's a monetary issue that is also always leading and being able to make uh, the position of being the person to define what has to be done, to put the cliches on the people and to decide what is uh, the team and what is modernity and what is uh, kind of old fashioned. 
But in the first time in history, Nollywood film managed to go above all those um, mentioned um, uh, obstacles that you have to uh, um, um, kind of, you know, jump over with the help of being able to be the one, um, you know, bringing in their own monetary uh, 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 power into the system. So basically from that point of view, that is um, already why we are talking about Nollywood film in the first place anyway, because normally um, films from Africa would be something uh, people will not really think about or laugh about. When I started watching Nollywood film, people were laughing about it because these films were basically, um, they didn't take care of the, of the volume. You know, the tune was really Bad and and the technique was was really low because it was it started with the idea of of, of home videos, and um, as we also know, soap in Germany, uh, soap is like something we watch every day, but it's not uh, basically something that Germany would go out with and say, oh, this is our leading uh, uh, soap. Uh, we are making uh, millions from it. But in the case of Nollywood film, this is um, actually one of the biggest research we have. The reflection of the black community to us on Nollywood film has not really got there. Um, uh, on a publication right now named Black Women Who Reloaded, and basically in this uh, publication now already I can figure out that there is a different experience level of uh, uh, black woman diaspora and a black woman German. And um, this is really interesting because for the black diaspora, the Nollywood film is very interesting and, um, and very nurturing. And in the uh, perspective of, of black Germans, Nollywood films is, is nothing that they can um, they can um, relate with the, the gestures in the Nollywood films and the images is not nothing that can commit with their uh, sympathy or with the experience they uh, have. Um, so it's also very interesting. So it, it's it's the um, uh, black German perspective is basically um, going on a level of, of the Western-eyed view. And uh, African diaspora, it's just like um, becoming a letter from a tomb. Yeah, it's, um, it's really a, a blessing to, to, to relate to all this forgotten uh, history when you uh, uh, are African diaspora in Europe. You, you are so blessed to see that um, you are missing a lot of stuff. You cannot relate with them anymore, or you're just happy that um, they remember you, that it, it's still there. And um, there's the tradition, the tradition of dressing that you can also see very well in the film, beautiful traditional clothing and uh, and the Western art perspective is also something that is not um, of, of, of beautiful image in this um, a perspective because the clothes are not in the shape that is um, really known in the Western uh, view and Western perspective. So, which means uh, if uh, the Western perspective does not um, dominate and tell uh, us basically this is the mainstream perspective. This is how a film has to be. This is the gestic, this is uh, an act actress and, and that's why she gets the Oscar because she can uh, act like this. But it's not relating to the African perspective. It's nothing that the African perspective can use from this and that's why the Nollywood film is a really healing uh, perspective for, for, for the African uh, people and for the African diaspora. And um, 
maybe in future also for Hollywood. And um, I would like to see uh, a Nollywood film get an Oscar, maybe. Hi, right, thanks for your presentation. Thank you. I just want to raise one issue. Um, yesterday we had quite a few presentations, one particularly by Dio on Nollywood. Um, and it, I, I just want to kind of, I'm not sure if question or comment, that isn't there the danger that instead of, um, instead of create, instead of kind of taking away the cliches that, that the West has about Africa, Nollywood actually creates its own cliches. Um, Dio said, I think they're producing 50, 50 films a, a week and more or less all the same, churning out the same things, um, which is just creating new cliches. The other thing I also want to say is that I, I think Nollywood is, is very much something, if you want to call it West African, it, there's a hu huge difference, I would argue, between Southern Africa and West Africa and is also with, with North Africa. So I, I, I don't think that Nollywood is necessarily a true reflection of what the entire continent is about. I think that is basically the same issue I've said before. If you would have to go on the pyramid and think of from which perspective are you talking when you are talking about a Nollywood film. Uh, you always have to see that all of us, African, wherever you come from, Western eye, you have the perspective of the Western eye anyway. So Nollywood is in a structure of defining it itself. If this uh, a stage of definition is cliche in the Western eye, why not? So it is a cliche, but then you have to um, go deep inside and say, where is the cliche coming from? You know, who is defining what is a cliche to a society? The Nollywood society are creating their own society cultural structure to recreate, rethink, to learn, to nurture their people. It's um, on a higher cultural level at times, it's on a lower cultural level. But to name it a cliche, you have to uh, kind of pull out from which perspective are you, are you there to name it a cliche. It might be a cliche at a point or not, you know, but this is, this is what happens anyway if you are creating, you know. You will always find a structure that would seem to be cliche, but to the European view of watching a Nollywood film, they will always uh, uh, see it as a cliche because that's what I try to, to, to put out. You know, this understanding of our images work, this experience that will arise in the head of an African person, seeing something like the subject of the food, for instance, that name now, is given the African brain, a lot of subcategories that is getting into your brain at that moment. And the European perspective, it can never be explained to you. This is the similarity that is between what the so-called African people is. It is something that goes through you. You know what you're seeing, and it is a lot of levels in there. A grandfather telling a story, it's a lot of levels in there coming into your brain because the whole history of Africa is about grandfathers and grandmothers telling the story 
of the heritage, what has been. And why is it, I think I can say it's Nollywood is whole Africa. And I wanted to start with a film that we did, uh, but maybe you can see it for yourself online. It's Metamorphosis, uh, Drugs in the Park. So this is like a 10 minutes issue. I wanted to start with this film basically to show you and say, put this film in your head and if we finish the discussion, could that be a Nollywood film? Because I was addressed that this has got uh, aspects of a Nollywood film. So that's when I started saying, okay, why is that so? Anytime I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere, no matter what I do, it's always a kind of a different kind of gesture I will make all my life, no matter how much I will try to not do it. But anybody that is in the same experience line with me would totally know what's going on. So that is either a possibility that could happen that um, uh, the Western perspective could say, from this point, um, we understand more on the, not, because it's, it's also, it's nurturing me, and it's also nurturing all of us. It's the history beyond that cannot be tell, that people cannot even fight against anymore, that is possible through the Nollywood film to be shown. This, this is a, a greater possibility than any other uh, uh, measurements. And um, we've been a medium partner from a lot of films here in Germany. And um, I can really say Nollywood film is something that is spread it through the whole Africa because I kind of know some films now that have been media partner for them for kind some time and the 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 way of 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 showing uh, images uh, the way of, of of gesturing that is always understood as a Nollywood film is a broad something and it's also very interesting to to see that um, there's a possibility, there's a resource in Africa that can really connect all Africans. And uh, that is basically uh, uh, the Nollywood film. Of course, we can uh, intellectually say, oh no, the percentage here in South Africa is maybe a little lower. But what has been happening since is that um, African people cannot connect themselves or they are very divided, and uh, Nollywood Wood film is basically showing the possibility that has arise to connect up beyond all the atmosphere. It's a great resource we've uh, got there. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, we're, we're Nigerians as well, who have come all the way from London and we're filmmakers. And um, the industry of Nollywood has been talked about a lot in this particular event. And one of the questions we have for you is this. Um, should filmmakers, African filmmakers and Nigerian filmmakers in the diaspora create a supplementary industry? Because a lot of filmmakers in London that we've had conversations with are saying that they don't want to associate themselves with Nollywood based on how the movies are being portrayed, the negative image, and the fact that movie makers back in Nigeria are not willing to effect a change in terms of um, acting and quality uh, movies, you know, bringing out quality movies. You know, we talked about 50 films being produced in a week. You know, there's really not a structure in place. So these filmmakers in the diaspora are saying, no, we don't want to associate ourselves with this kind of industry, even though they're making money. You know, like my partner, business partner said yesterday, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, so they are comfortable in that situation. 
So the question is, should we create a supplementary industry and set ourselves aside and say, hey, we're not going to be part of this industry because it doesn't align with what we believe a, a, a proper industry should be? Or should we, as diaspora and filmmakers, you know, go back to Africa and, and say, hey, things have changed, the world has moved on, then it's time for us to also upscale this industry. You know, so that's the question I'm, I'm throwing to you right now. I think, I think Nollywood is a great opportunity. And I think in all great opportunities, we have obstacles that we are facing. And I think you can be a part, also naming yourself Nollywood film, and you are still creating um, a quality that is beyond the cliche. Because it's basically the same issue. These cliches are coming from the totally structured area saying this is how gestures has to look like. This is how lightning has to look like. This is how the tune has to go and be regulated. And Nollywood film is, for me, a kind of crazy activist uh, move that is really not uh, using all these techniques, but actually getting to the society. The society are the people accepting it, loving it. It's like you are voting for a president in a democracy, and that's Nollywood. And um, I think you can always do your kind of what you're doing without saying, uh, I am facing uh, Nollywood, uh, and I'm, I'm, I, I want to change the structure of Nollywood. And it can be just the next generation of showing the next step where Nollywood has to, to get to. Because I was trying to compare a little bit of Bollywood. And basically what happened in Bollywood was just the same thing that happened with Nollywood. Nobody was interested in Bollywood. But with the time now, people love Bollywood in Germany because they uh, started having, um, you know, the kind of bed that is, they, they call it Bollywood bed. You know, children like to have this a princess bed way of dressed up. So they are having their merchandising in the uh, uh, market uh, uh, worldwide now. And I think also this, this dancing, cultural dancing with a lot of people has been, become something that the whole world, you know, exploit it and, and start using it in all these videos and, and the Bollywood uh, uh, dancing skills has been passed over. And this is something that has to basically happen if we are trying to put out a vision on a uh, Nollywood film. How can we create the vision that the images we are showing in a Nollywood film is interesting to the um, Western-eyed audience, and um, I think I will pretty much ask you to cooperate and get to those guys and, and cooperations to really, whatever, get to the next level, you yeah, or do your own thing, but um, I, I think it's not about uh, fighting uh, the cliches of uh, what a Nollywood film is, because um, at the end, you always have to question um, from what, what point of view is the cliche? Because we all of us, we have the straight, clear, how film is made, action film, this kind of, you know, uh, lightning and choo -choo -choo and the nice cuts. We know it, we, we grew up with it. And now Nollywood film is not, you know, if we ha you have to give a Nollywood film a mark, you, you know, it has to, it's going to be F9, eh? because it's not in this category. But uh, the content we are getting from Nollywood film is more than, um, than we can, look, let me go to the part of Sugar Daddy. 
the sugar daddy structure and the polygamous home. If I watch a film with a polygamous structure, I totally know what is in the film. But I was watching a film with a girlfriend, and you know, she was just facing me with questions. And, and this was like interesting to see. I think we cannot um, uh, um, kind of face the um, social structure struggle we are finding out there, and we are consuming, and we have been nurtured, and also fight the same cliches that is in the Western eye, because this is, this is like, you know what I mean. If you take the Bollywood, they are facing this uh, racial structure of uh, that some people in their own culture are less privileged. So basically, they always like to, to show um, the marriages between all these uh, categories that this underprivileged category wants to marry this other privileged category. So it's always the same structure they show in the Bollywood scene because this is their, the, the main problem they have in their society, this structuring of, of privileges and by birth. We don't even have that problem at the end of the day, but we also have some Interesting structures being shown to us, yeah? House boy, house girl, you know, sugar daddy. Uh. So it's kind of a lot of things we, we learn in the Nollywood film ourselves. And I think the next step we have to take in Nollywood film is to uh, uh, have this vision and say, mm, let's start showing a solution that is not uh, depending on church, uh, 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 resurrections and uh, and uh, wise men would do. Uh, I have to stop. <laughs>